Leslie, thank you so much for helping us. We really, really appreciate you. Probably made 200 phone calls yesterday, and you were one of the only ones that immediately just said, whatever I can do to help. You, you didn't ask what you can get out of it. You didn't anything else, and we just really, really appreciate that. So I'd love it if you take a minute and just show us what you do here and tell sure. us a little bit about the place. Okay. Uh, we've been around since 84. Uh, our mission is to collect materials that would otherwise be getting thrown away and make them available to low to moderate income households, uh, community projects such as yours, uh, churches, religious groups, uh, artists, uh, people doing historic uh, renovations, anyone kind of interested looking into saving money and saving materials from going to the landfill. It is such an amazing place. Where do you get all the product? Um, it's actually pretty amazing. <laughs> it's coming from individuals who may be renovating their kitchen or bath and what they're taking out is absolutely fine. They just don't like the style, the color, um, dimensions. Um, they can donate it to us, contractors, builders, all the way through to companies clearing out dead inventory in their warehouses. The guys have really been stepping up. Everything's been going really great today. And if we can just, you know, light the fire, keep it lit, you know, I think we can get this done. William assures me that uh, he's got it covered and I trust William. Yeah. <laughs> In William we trust. That's right. Well, uh, let me know what I have to do and uh, we'll just get the shingles here and, and the fell paper and, you know, let's get the roof up and, and get the show rolling. I think we just got to sit downstairs and make phone calls. Okay. Well, why don't you uh, give me a few minutes and uh, I'm going to take care of the roof. Appreciate it. My pleasure. And then we can Beautiful. get everything else rolling. Beautiful. Sounds good. All right, my man. We'll make it happen. All right. Oh, now I know everything's been taken <laughs> care of. We've got a 42-foot room, and you decided to put the return in the middle of my kitchen. Counters going here, stove here, gas lines here. We looked at it from downstairs, it shouldn't be any problem because we're going to be using what's called a jumper duct underneath. So we're going to be able to still do what we need to do downstairs and be able to just move this return over to get it outside of the kitchen area. How far? So it won't be a problem as far as you need me to. So when are you going to be done? Today? Um, actually, we'll probably finish up tomorrow, probably half a day I tomorrow. Look how you look away on that. Well, I, just, you know, I didn't really think about that. You know, uh, uh, this time of year we're really busy, so you know. But it's important that we get this family, you know, get it done, and so you guys can move on with your projects. So that's you know, right now that's our priority is to get this taken care of. So yeah, we'll, we'll, what doesn't get done today will be done tomorrow. <laughs> custom made all these windows for wow, us because not stuff. one single window was a stock size, of course. Pella has been very generous with living classrooms over the years and that's fantastic. They're helping the Kiosis like this. AJ, hey, we've come a long way. William, you guys have been incredible. The, the good fellows, Project Serve, the whole team effort. I mean, it's really, really impressive. And uh, talk about changing lives. And, it's been, people. it's been a good partnership. I mean, I'm just happy that you guys, uh, made, you know, gave us the call and got us involved. Everything's looking good there. The roof, you know, yeah. the, the all the all the uh, structural get that things. Cornice up there, though, right? Now, yeah. that's one of the things yeah. that uh, we're yeah we're we're having some issues with. That is really ugly. That's gnarly. Yeah. And uh, the windows are going to be going in. That's going to be great. Yeah, but then we've got, um, you know, what if we get all this stuff done and we can't get anyone to. Uh, to, to get that. I mean, that's a, probably a pretty expensive proposition, yeah. but um, the, the gentleman that owns the, uh, the, the house next door, we're going to be talking with him. campus of living, living Classrooms. Is this uh, Crossroads School? This is the Crossroads School, which is operated by uh, the Living Classrooms Foundation. Okay. The uh, Kiyosi family. They're really an amazing family. Uh, 
if we could have 160 kids at the Kiosis, we'd be really blessed yeah. and had the uh, privilege to teach Caleb, who came in, um, and I think you guys might have heard the history that his mother um, decided to homeschool him for years. Well, the decision to homeschool was, um, you know, where we live in Baltimore, um, when we first moved here. Actually, my husband was here before I was, and um, the neighborhood was really bad. Um, and then the schools are not the greatest schools. And so that was one of the reasons that we homeschool. But also, um, we wanted to give them morals and standards and our beliefs, and we didn't want to put them in school where, you know, a lot of influence from other kids and things when they were very young. You wouldn't believe the progress in the span of a year. Caleb literally moved up six grade levels in mathematics in really? one year. And um, wow. I really... Wow credit his father and mother for everything we asked um, of them to be able to support us at home with mm -hmm. homework or um, just extracurricular things. His parents were just jumped right on top of it and from day one mm -hmm. we were able to get Caleb on board and just really have him soar and take off. Yes. Here at the school we have um, a couple tenants that we kind of uh, really try to inspire not just here at school but also with the families okay. and uh, they're called the five promises and it's just kind of um, you know, a framework in which the kids know exactly what is expected of them when they walk through the school and uh, no excuses and commitment to quality and perseverance and honor and integrity. Mm -hmm. And these type of things that, um, you know, not just during their classwork, but also when they go home and they're working with their parents and just right. trying to keep, you know, their own room clean. You know, their mom can say no excuses and use that same language. And I really think over the years it's really helped uh, the families really be tight with the school and understand that, you know, this mission to get the kids not only bought into their own education, but bought into being better citizens has really been uh, successful over the last few years. This fire happened, and it, of course for any unfortunate individual that had to go through that or a family, it's a life-altering experience. But to have the support of those at Living Classrooms, I think it meant a lot to the Kiosis, Yes. but yes. I think it's just a reflection more of how much they mean to us and how much individuals mean to us. I mean, yes. they are such unbelievable people. They are so giving themselves that when something like this happens, it's almost a knee-jerk reaction to respond the way that Living Classrooms and Crossroads did. Awesome. It's not something that, you know, you have to stop and think about. And so, you use the word family, people use the word family sometimes in, in hokey ways and it gets overused. Right. But in a family, when tragedy strikes, the reaction is immediate, it's swift, and it's without any sort of analysis. And that's exactly the way I think that Living Classrooms and Crossroads responded because they are a part of our family. lies with my music. Uh, as you know, I'm a classical uh, vocalist and have been singing all my life, so that's, that's really where my passion is, and, and it, I pour that into my music. Of course, I'm a devoted family man. I have three beautiful children, three beautiful girls, and I've been married for coming on seven years now, so it's, uh, life is good. It's, yeah. it's been nice. I've been a f believer of the Goodfellas ever since I heard the movement and have been, uh, am excited to be a part of it just because it's, it's really your, it's a grassroots movement. You're, you, we got the Goodfellas, we got the mob that's going to be around us and we're really going to try and, and create a positive change in Baltimore and it's needed. So I, I'd like to, to go out there and find you know, those types of families that have just had something just completely tragic happen and, and let them realize that the, there's a whole community. It's not just your family that's around you, but there's a whole community that's going to rally around you and, and be a part of your family.
before the fire, there was a lot more room to move around, and we, we utilized a lot more of our house. I don't really have any room to do homework. You need space to paint a painting, and it's not really doable now. What I want for my children is to be happy and to be content with, you know, their surroundings and whatever their dreams are, what they want to do for the future, that they can work towards achieving that. Seems like I do.